For most GameMaker users, the place functions are the bread and butter of collision detection. And to showcase this, I've got three objects. I've got object place, this will be our player that we're going to control and move around. Object ball, which inside is not flagged as solid. And object wall, which is flagged as solid. That's to show the difference between colliding with solid objects and non-solid objects. Now inside our object place is where all the code is. In the create code, I'm just initializing some things. Speed equals eight, that's it. It's just a variable for me to move my character about the screen eight pixels per step. So inside the step event, we've got a whole bunch of different code blocks. And the first one is simply movement. The rest are turned off for now. So inside, I've got if keyboard check, so this is if I'm holding down the virtual key left, that's the arrow key, I'm going to move my x position minus equals speed. So I'm going to move x minus is to the left side of the screen at the speed of 8. And I'm going to do that for all my directions, left, right, up, and down. Nothing special here. You should probably already know that if I ran this code, I wouldn't collide with either of these objects. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay, so here's the room, and if I use the arrow keys, I can move the player around no problem. I don't collide with the walls, and I don't collide with these little pink balls. But I can move around. So nothing special yet. Now if I were to comment out, like that, comment out my code, instead of deleting it, just in case I want to bring it back, I can always remove that. So we'll do that, so GameMaker will skip over it. And instead, we'll run place empty. This is the first function I'm going to show you. This will check for a collision with any other instance. So it's just checking is the place empty or not, the place it's going to go. So I've set up a collision check for each arrow key, which is typically what you need to do. So for moving left, if there are no collisions, I've said if keyboard check left, just as before in the movement code, if I'm holding down the left key, then it will go drop down to the next check, next conditional statement, which is if place empty. Here's our function. And it wants to know an x and y value. Which place are you talking about? And when GameMaker does collisions, it takes your object that you're checking, moves it, theoretically moves it, it doesn't actually move it, but it pretends like it moves an object somewhere, and then checks its collision box, or precise collision, which will map directly to the sprite, but it checks your collision box against whatever else, and in this case is any other instance in the entire room. So, if I hold down the left key, GameMaker will check if the place is empty. And the place I'm going to check is my current x and y value, except x is going to be minus speed. So I'm saying, if you, if you remember, speed is 8. I'm saying 8 pixels to my left. If that place is free, go there, which is x minus equals speed. But of course, if this is not true, if this returns false, this will not execute and I won't move to the left. So it's as if something is in my way and I'm being blocked. And that's how the collision works. And I've just done it for each other key. So here's what it looks like. Okay, so now that we're back in the room, I can move by 8 pixels. That's my speed. But now if I try to move through something like the wall, I can't. I can't move through it because it checks 8 pixels ahead. It will imaginarily put my player 8 pixels ahead and say, is there a collision there? And if so, I can't move there. I can only move if place is empty. Now, as you can see, I do get hung up kind of on this. It doesn't make perfect collisions here. Despite the fact that both of these are circular bounding ellipses, I can't move perfectly because I'm checking 8 pixels ahead. And if I can't move 8 pixels, I stop. But I could move 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 pixels and it'd still be fine. Now, that's something that we have to program ourselves. It doesn't come with these place functions. So I'll have to show you in a more advanced collision lesson. If we come back in, we still have movement commented out. It's turned off. And we're going to turn off place empty. Now we're going to check out the next kind of place function. This is place free. We'll turn it on, and there we go. This checks for a collision with any instances flagged as solid. Now, this works exactly like place empty, but now it only checks for things flagged as solid. So, if this works the way it should, it, it's, I've written it exactly the same way, there are no changes. I should now 
be able to pass through these balls, but still get blocked by the walls. So here's what that looks like. So here we go. So as you can see, I can pass through the balls because they're not flagged as solid. But I still cannot pass through the walls because walls are flagged as solid. So there we go. Place free and place empty are similar, but one checks any instance and one checks only solid instances. So now if we come back in and we turn off place free, there we go, we're going to learn place meeting. From my experience using GameMaker and, and looking into other people's projects, this seems to be one of the more popular ways of checking collision. And the reason for that is not only does it check a position, like place empty and place free, it requires that you give it some sort of object. So, checks for a collision between two instances at a given position. So once again, it's exactly like the other code, but when we come down here, I'm going to say if not place meeting. So it's going to jump ahead 8 pixels again, like we were doing with all the other collisions. And it's going to say, if I don't meet another instance. And in this case, I'm checking for object wall. So here's the position, x, y, and then what you want to check for your collision. So in this case, I would still pass through the balls, but not be able to pass through the walls. Because I'm only checking for object wall. So here's what this would look like. Okay, as before, there we go. I'm not checking for collisions. I'm not checking for a place meeting, a meeting at a place with the object ball, only object wall, and I still can't pass through walls. To expand on the idea of place meeting, you could do all, and that will check any instance. But of course, if you were to do that, you could just do uh, place empty, place free for solid or non-solid. You wouldn't even have to write this in. So you're wondering, how is this important? What if I want to collide with certain objects, but not all objects, and I can't flag everything as solid? Well, what you could do is use parenting. Let's say that I had a whole bunch of objects, and they were all parented to one thing called, I don't know, we'll call it parent, uh, typically I do something like impasse. So anything that is under this parent as a child, if you remember in parenting, you go here to parent and you select what you want to parent to. Theoretically, if object ball and object wall were both children of a parent called parent impasse, now I wouldn't be able to go through either of them. But still, if I had some other object, like object enemy, and he wasn't a child of parent impasse, I could go through him because I wouldn't be checking for him. I'm only checking for anything associated with this parent. So that's why most people tend to use place meeting because you can be very specific as to what you want to collide with. If I go back to object wall, some people even use object wall as being invisible. So we wouldn't even have it visible. And we would go into our room. Let's look at the room I've got. And now it's always visible in your room editor so you can see it and play around, but if I were to load up the room right now and actually launch the game, the walls would be invisible. And the reason for that is you could have other instances of objects or sprites or tiles on your background. You could always choose tiles to paint with. You can't actually collide with a tile, at least not in a simple way. There are complicated ways to do it. And then you just put these boxes, these object walls, over your background that you can't move through. And then if you were to launch your game, you can see now the walls are invisible. So they're still there, I still can't move through them. But let's say I just drew, using tiles, like brick walls, and then a door that you can't go through, and some trees, and stuff like that. It would be very, very tedious to go through each one of those objects and create collision checks. So instead, you would just parent a bunch of objects to your object wall or object impasse or, or whatever you use as your one collidable parent. And then, you only have to say, using place meeting, as long as I'm not about to meet an object wall or impasse or parent, to be more specific, then I can't move through it. And that's why I find that place meeting seems to be the more popular choice with collision detection. Okay, so let's turn the walls back on so we can continue with the lesson. And this time we'll turn off place meeting. Now the last one I want to show you is place snap. This isn't 
technically a collision check. This returns whether the calling instance is aligned with the snapping values. So it will return true or false if my x and y position is divisible by our snap, whatever we chose. And in this case, I've created a variable called grid size and I'm using 64. So I've said if placed snapped, and down here you're choosing a horizontal snap and a vertical snap. And I've just chosen grid size, grid size. So if my character is snapped to 64 by 64, so my current x and y value are divisible by 64, here's what's going to happen. My speed is going to be zero, so I want to stop moving. Then it's going to check if I'm pressing a direction. So if I'm holding left, right, up or down, if I'm holding one of those keys, I'm going to set my horizontal and vertical speed. These are built-in speed variables that GameMaker has predefined for you and will set a constant speed. So let's just click on it with our middle click on our mouse and see what pops up. So here it is in the documentation and H speed under the description pretty much says that it'll move at whatever speed you've given it, whatever integer, and then it will constantly do that every step. So it's, it's like setting motion, or, or if you remember motion set, or anything like that where you've given it a value and every step the object will move in that direction, which is either negative or positive, H speed or V speed, every single step. So it's, it'll move and I don't even have to do anything. The reason I do it that way is so that when I'm not snapped to a grid, I will just nicely float to the next snap point. Down here I've just added a preventing of diagonals because that can change whether or not I'm going to be snapped to things because it is possible at a diagonal to not have an x and y value divisible by 64. So in this case I've just said if my horizontal speed is not equal to zero, that means I'm moving left or right, then my v speed is now zero. So I'm not allowed to move up and down if I'm moving left and right. Likewise, I've done that with v-speed. Of course, h-speed will happen before v-speed, but it's okay. Here's what it looks like. Now, of course, what I said was kind of complicated, but here's the result. If I just tap in a direction, there we go. I constantly move at our speed, which uh, was set to 8, until I'm snapped to 64. Most important part of what I'm showing you is 8 is or at least 64 is a multiple of 8. 8 times a value gets 64. If I chose a value that does not eventually multiply to 64, I would not snap to the next grid position. I may overshoot it and keep going until I equal 64. So that's an important thing to realize is that your speed and your snap should be multiples. They should should work together. Now I've chosen keyboard check instead of press or release or whatever is because if I hold down the key I can keep going, I can keep bypassing the snap. It's only once I release that it checks, well, am I snapped to 64 by 64? And if no, it'll keep moving at H speed or V speed until it does get to an X or Y value divisible by 64. And then if you remember, I said speed equals zero. That will set either, either H or V speed, either one to zero. Well, actually, it, it will set both, just in case I were moving diagonally. And that's it. So if you want to do kind of grid-based movement, that's like really simple code for doing it. There we go, I just move around freely, and then if I release, it'll check whether or not I'm snapped to 64, and if not, I go to the next one.